Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need more time to recover. Steve. Um, Herman, I think it's, it speaks volumes the number of fans you had there from Iceland at the semi final, being that you were only not playing. And everyone was jealous of their Hermanator t shirts. <laughs> so, if, like, I think on behalf of everyone here, if you stay at the club, which we all wish you, yeah. wish all the best and we want to see you here, can you make sure next season the Hermanator t shirt came to us? Yeah. <laughs> Bring a few in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, give them some extras. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Got my name, Kevin. Roy has been. Uh, sorry, Roy. Okay, that's uh, three for, for both bits and, and Herman. Um, goal line technology. What's, what's your kind of thoughts on that? It's nothing worse than scoring a great goal and watch it come out and not be accredited for it. You know, happened to someone in their career, you know, in their career. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, I'm a believer in um, in, in debate in football, and I, you know, I know you turn around and say, well, we've seen it after the game, but you know, it's all about, I think fo football should be still about human error, you know, and um, once you take that out, there's one thing less to, to talk about, I know there'll be a few pundits out of work at that, but, um, <laughs> No, I'm not, I'm not a great fan of it. I'm, I'm, sure it'll come, I'm sure it'll come in. I'm sure it'll come in and, you know, you get your, you get your likes of your... Um, I mean, for example, yesterday's game, um, the, the, the derby, the Birmingham, Birmingham Villa derby, I thought it was brilliant that there was two managers. <laughs> <laughs> Different things. And one said it was a penalty, the other one said, well, what was he watching? It wasn't a penalty. And I thought that was great, I thought it was really funny. But if you, you know, if, you, if you're going to get, uh, as you say, goal line go -like technology, then I reckon it'll come in for lots of different things, and I don't think it'll help the game. You certainly won't you know, help the players, like Herman and that, have a go at referees and sort of thing. Absolutely No, yeah, I agree. You know, if there's no, you know, if there's no points. If you can look at everything and everything is yeah. clear cut, 100 percent. Yeah, this is possible. This was also just what can it take for another right. game? You know, there has to be some. If, if I can just come back on that. So as Plum is in only only two, but you must get that feel. Do you think players would drop goal line technology, or players are happy for sort of insert place as it as it runs? Generally speaking. Uh, in the goal line, I'm not, yeah, maybe, I'm not too sure, because if, if people, you or anybody would want this, it, it's so easy today, but they're all got their earpiece anyway, mm -hmm. and you know, you can see straight away offside or not, if he waits with his decision three or four seconds, yeah, well, it wasn't good if he was offside. It's so, it's so, you know, accessible now to do this, but I don't think they, I think the football governments don't want it either, so. The debate is going to keep, keep the game interesting. Yeah, I think that's what I think it should do. To keep making it interesting, you take away debate. I mean, it, it's, it's it's got into cricket. Well, it's been cricket first. It's got to, to tennis now. And I, I don't. I'm not a fan of it. And I'm sure that Herman in his career has cleared a few off the line that have been behind the line. And it's played on. And vice versa, but you know, it turns around about. I think, I think in in uh, in football, we particularly in the league, cup might be slightly different, but in in the league, you finish where you're supposed to, even though you've had some dodgy decisions over the over the course of the seasons or wherever. By and large, you finish where you're supposed to. Yeah. Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was going to ask Vince about uh, Gary Penny. Uh, oh, yeah. and, <laughs> well, he managed one of the um, big surprises. That, uh, the um, nobody gave us a snowball's chance in hell to uh, beat Leeds United up at Leeds yeah. by five three, and uh, that was uh, really. <coughs>
aloof and no, um, no sort of contact. But um, how was he? Uh, well, I grew, up with, I grew up with Terry, and um, you know, during the Christmas parties at the same time, was 12, 13 year old, and he didn't have a lot to say then. You know? <laughs> he, he didn't. He, besides, he was very quiet, and you, you'd be sort of mixed being quite up with being maybe a little or arrogant, but it was just quiet. I mean, to the extent where when he signed for Crystal Palace, he, he was a Newcastle lad, had great ability, and um, they, they couldn't sort of get that ability out of him. So what they did, <laughs> they invited, well, you know, we used to meet up every um, school holidays and the way, and they said to him, uh, your brother, bring your brother down. Well, <coughs> train. And they give his, his brother a year's contract as goalkeeper, just so Terry could fit in. And I've got to tell you, he's the worst goalkeeper you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but he got Terry out a little bit. But he was always, he's always aloof. And then I think he was more more surprised than anyone that, he, that Terry Venables turned around to him and said, "I'll make you the manager of um, the Portsmouth Football Club." Because everyone went, "You never managed anyone before." And you know, Venables just basically that he he acted like. Um, managers were supposed to act in a day, were supposed to, you know. I mean, even when I was talking to him, all of a sudden it was like, he said, all right, plenty, it was, and he would say, if you said to him you had a good day, he said, well, it was a day of two hours. He was like, it was in the It was a day of two hours. The mission done all she did, but she just didn't quite do enough. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He managed the um, Trinidad and Tobago team, and he did manage uh, think Northampton, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah went Northampton, and uh, didn't have a good time with it there. But, uh, I mean, Terry Venables just threw him in at the threw him in at the deep end, and um, he did. He, yeah, he did. He did do one of the funniest things I've ever seen, though, and it was here, which you probably wouldn't have seen. It, it concerned um, John Durney. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you remember when Terry Fennick was manager, he used to wear a big overcoat and uh, stand aside the kid most managers did, you know, they wore overcoats before I wear an overcoat. And he was trying to, John Durney was having a particular nightmare over and he was trying to get his attention. And you know, you know when you're playing bad, if you don't look at the... I'm just talking to you, I'm having a nightmare, I've got to play myself. And he's caught, he's going, Bones! Bones! And he's just caught, caught in the devil and... All of a sudden, there's a, there's a break in play, and he's, I think he's got um, Fitzroy Simpson's attention. To, get on the dining! So he's gone, Dance! Get for once, yes. So, oh, there we go. He's turned around like that, and he's got a big coat on. And he's looked at him, and as he's, he's looked at him, in those days, he's opened his coat up like that, as slow as he could, so no one could see. And he's got his number under his coat. <laughs> and he's put the coat back in, meaning if you don't pull your finger out, you're on the next one coming off this bench. <laughs> 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 that was quite good. In those days, you didn't have your balls with that, just there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one to twelve in those days, over. Tidy up. You only had two numbers, though. That one of them was mine. <laughs> So you're saying he's a flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's doing, but I'm not sorry about that. Steve. Um, Herman, we're talking about referees, and there's a lot of criticism about premiership refs. But as players, I mean, it comes across the only referee that we seem to be able to talk to is Mark Plattenberg. But I don't know what, what the players think. Do you think refereeing standards have gone down? I think, well, not really. I, there's a few referees there, but I think as long as they, you know, use common sense, all these red cards are sticking by the rule, take a shirt off, you know, you know, this this bullshit that nobody cares about, you know, and ruining the game for something silly, I mean, two footed tackles and all that, that can, you know, ruin somebody's career. Yeah, red card. But now it's like we raised a foot a bit too high, red card. Because it's not, and, and if you touch someone in the face, red card. Mm. Yeah, that's going to cause him real hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's not for me just 
bit more common sense. Okay? Because nobody likes this. You know, people pay good money for watching top quality football. You just want to have a bit of flow and, and yeah. That's it. No. If the ref if you don't remember who was the referee, he's having a good game. I actually quite like uh what's the the ball the by young no? Where? Cool. Lee Blaze. Morning. How would Sorry? How would Howard Webb, yeah. I like, I like him. You can say, you know, you can have a good go at the minute. It just <laughs> 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 What about Mr. Foyer who's doing the cup ball? <laughs> <laughs> I think Sol and Silva and escorted him off the pitch at some games as I remember that game. Well, you know, I just hope he has a good game, you know. But, uh, the, uh, and the other thing I can say, you know, <coughs> if there is a big difficult decision for referees, it seems to be easier for them to call it when it's for the big clubs rather yeah. than against them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they call it, but against them, the play off. Mm. That's the only sort of thing. <coughs> they always get a little bit extra advantage, but they're big clubs, and that's a fact. We've got to remember there's a lot, there's a lot riding on it for. Um, I mean, I can't believe it when I when I see them, when I see the referees and do the, you know, the come through the dressing room. It's like you wouldn't believe the entourage that comes through with the referee. I, I just used to think it was the referee and two. It's an advisement, an advisor assistant, really. <laughs> but you've got uh, you've got the referee, you've got the advisor assistant, you've got the well, the two large assistant, no. you've got the fourth <laughs> official, you've got uh, the assessor. I'm, I'm missing out a couple there, John, aren't I? Yeah. There's a few that come through, I think, uh, and they, I think their dressing room. I mean, it's not the biggest dressing rooms in the world at Prague. I think their one's bigger than the two that they have already waited. <laughs> I just keep coming out of them. <laughs> and you know, the point of the matter is that some referees, they won't, I mean, Herman said about you, them using <coughs> common sense, and it's obvious, you, you can have a much easier job if you use common sense. But sometimes using common sense means you're not sticking by the rules. And if you don't stick by the rules, you could be doing a, a, a championship game the following week because the assessor's gone. Right? So, you know, most of the most referees, I mean, are governed by fear, and fear of being out of the limelight. So they stick to the rules, and consequently, a lot of times, as Herman says, ruin, ruin games by making them uneven. Next question. Um, being, being aware of the two largest the club, since the club went into administration, it came to both Herman and Vincent. Well, how has that affected your the day to day uh, ability for you to do your job and what immediate changes and other changes have been made to the way that you've had to start or had to now operate whilst you do your job for the best as you can for the, the club over you know, on the pitch training, football for CSA facilities wise for players, and obviously being to be behind the scenes, obviously you're doing your corporate activities. Yeah, there was a few people from the training club that you know that we had a word with <coughs> we had a word with uh, the you know they got the yeah uh, and uh, so, and uh, we, we had a word with the administrator and uh, you know it's one thing being a, in administration but you know for football club to be absolutely shambolic so uh, you know if the kid wasn't there but, you know and couldn't have a massage so you pull your hand me because you know you could have had a better of, of <coughs> preparation for a game of training so yeah all the players in the well a few players in the world with him and uh, yeah, yeah he, they were brought back the the people that we really needed on a day to day basis. You know, so before it went absolutely it's been symbolic but Absolutely symbolic and you know unprofessional. Yeah. So uh, that, that's yeah, it's it's been fine. It's the so the training plan has been fine. <laughs> behind the scenes, I, I, I don't know. The biggest biggest thing you notice is um, you know people. A lot of people have gone from the uh, on a particular on the hospitality side, which 